Welcome to NTI Nightly. I am Janelle Novel. This edition Stop Stories. The transformation of Sufre continues with the opening of Old Trafford Complex. Team St. Lucia arrives in Trinidad and Tobago for Carifest 14. The roadmap to the development of local government reform has been refined. All that plus the latest in youth development and sports and the NTN Nouvelle Aquayol. Efforts by the government of St. Lucia to reposition the town of Soufre continue to unfold with the official opening of the Old Trafford Complex complete with a farmer's market and bus terminal. The opening ceremony was held on Thursday, 15th August 2019. Lisa Joseph reports. These projects have transformed this area in which we are gathered here today. Prominent Secretary in the Ministry of Economic Development, Housing, Urban Renewal, Transport and Civil Aviation, Claudia Emanuel, expressed gratitude to the government and people of the Republic of China, Taiwan, for their continued commitment to the socio-economic development of St. Lucia as a co-sponsor of the Old Trafford Complex. He explained that the objective of the project is to create a facility that will allow improved vending of produce and a central bus terminal for bus drivers plying the Sufre route. The permanent secretary gave a breakdown of the investment made into the project. Total expenditure on phase one amounts to $1,324,000. Some nine contractors have been engaged during the first phase of the project. The key components of the expenditure are as follows. Project preliminaries, 40000 Bus shelter number one, 235000 Bus shelter number two and the concession booth, 255000 Farmers market and concession booth, 443000 Electrical works, 90000 Pavement and other concrete works, 90000 Plumbing works, 16,000. Landscaping works, 75,000. And site management, 80,000. A total of $1.324 million. Minister in the Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Physical Planning, Natural Resources and Cooperatives, and Parliamentary Representative for SUFRA, Honorable Herod Stanislas, explained that this was only the beginning as there are more phases to come on stream. He noted components of the second and third phases. It's going to be the restaurant, which is going to be going somewhere to the back there, and the craft market. Remember, we had a craft market somewhere behind there, which got damaged by Lenny. Yes, the tail piece of tropical storm Lenny. And that was in 1999, I believe, and it has never been rebuilt. So the craft market is going back over on this side. And the third phase of the project is going to be the main building you see right there. This is going to be a restaurant at the top, almost like a fine dining restaurant, because we do not have fine dining in the town of Sufre. So we want to have a fine dining restaurant right here, next to the river with the view of the pitons and the ocean. And the bottom of it is going to be the duty-free shops. So we are um, hoping to have duty-free liquor, tobacco, perfume, jewelry, clothing, and so on, right here in Sufre at Old Trafford. Market vendor Angela Matthew and representative of the Sufra V4 Minibus Association, Gabriel Mesman, expressed gratitude for the facility, highlighting new possibilities that it gives. At first, none of the bus drivers didn't like the idea of this place. But you know, in life, changes, it's always hard to accept changes, but it's always for the best. I never thought it would turn out so beautiful, as you could see for yourself, how nice it is. <laughs> I just want to thank everybody for coming, and I just wish the other towns and villages would take example from this and follow on. <laughs> I'm enjoying the, I want to thank the government for giving us this beautiful environment to work in. The official ceremony was held on Thursday, 15th August, 2019. From the Government Information Service. Lisa Joseph reporting. St. Lucia leads the territories of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, OECS, in the World Bank Ease of Doing Business Report 2019. The rankings are determined by sorting the aggregate scores on 10 topics, each consisting of several indicators giving equal weight to each topic. 
These topics include starting a business, dealing with construction permits, getting electricity, registering property, getting credit, protecting minority investors, paying taxes, trading across borders, enforcing contracts, and resolving insolvency. St. Lucia ranked 93 in the 2019 report with an overall score of 63.02. With the highest score attainable in each topic being 100, St. Lucia received a score of 89.18 in starting a business, a 0.39 increase from 2018. 76.33 in dealing with construction permits, a 0.12 increase from 2018. 82.97 in getting electricity, a 0.09 increase over 2018, 45.89 in resolving insolvency, a 0.06 increase over 2018, and a 59.90 in registering property, a 0.09 decrease when compared to 2018. There were no changes in getting credit, which received a score of 25, protecting minority investors with a score of 51.67, paying taxes with a score of 75.73, trading across borders a score of 73.87, and enforcing contracts with a score of 59.67. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Economic Growth, Job Creation, External Affairs and the Public Service, Honorable Alan Chastney, indicated that the government has been and will continue making the necessary adjustments so as to improve the overall business environment in St. Lucia. The e-government process that we're introducing now will substantially help in what we're doing. Um, the issue with... Um, Our judicial system and our rule of law, the alien landlords licenses that we have, um, our trade licenses. You know, we we for instance um, by merging our IBCs with our local companies, the IBCs were registering companies in 20 minutes. Um, our local company was taking weeks. So what we want to do in our negotiations is to be able to purchase the software system that we were using for our IBCs and now make that the platform for. Our local companies. The ease of doing business score captures the gap of each economy from the best regulatory performance observed on each of the indicators across all economies in the doing business sample since 2005. An economy's ease of doing business score is reflected on a scale from 0 to 100 where 0 represents the lowest and 100 represents the best performance. The ease of doing business ranking ranges from 1 to 109. In 2018, St. Lucia ranked 93, slipping two ranks from 2017, when the country ranked 91. The higher the ease of doing business ranking means the regulatory environment is more conducive to the starting and operation of a local firm. Prime Minister Honorable Shasne explained that St. Lucia is competing on a global level. The Caribbean continues to lose uh, against the rest of the world. The rest of the world are moving faster than we are as a region. Um, Jamaica has been, you know, the bright spot, um, and that, I guess, because of the IMF program, they, they're almost compelled to do a lot of those things. And this is where I ask for um, patience from solutions and their understanding, because sometimes we're having to make decisions that are dealing with the competitiveness of our region. And competitiveness matters, because without being competitive, can't grow the economy. If we don't grow the economy, then the resources we need to do some fundamental things are not there. Jamaica leads the Caribbean, ranking 75 globally, with a score of 67.47, with St. Lucia trailing at second place in the Caribbean. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The cast of A Little Folk Tale, as well as the poets, band members, writers and drummers, left St. Lucia via Hiranora International Airport Thursday, August 15, for Trinidad host country for Carifesta 14. Here's Anisia Antoine. With a contingent of 80 people, Team St. Lucia is hoping to make an indelible mark with its presentation. This year's presentation will include performances of La Wars and Masquerade, as well as the theatrical performance of A Little Folk Tale. 
Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, who previewed the production, expressed his contentment with every aspect of the production and stated that the group will leave a great impression of the amazing talent which exists in St. Lucia. Artistic Director of Carifesta's Team St. Lucia, Junior Frederick, says St. Lucia continues to make successful contributions to the arts in the region and Carifesta is no different. There is a nouveau cultural revolution led by innovation and a renaissance of folklore. And I say that with reference to a little folk tale. Invariably, this year's Carifesta's presentation is a reflection of the new wave of artistic expression. Our approach this year for Carifesta is to merge various genres of the performing arts, arts, craft, culture, foster synergies amongst the more experienced artists and the younger ones, showcase the contribution of St. Lucia's next generation of performers. The St. Lucia contingent will also receive opportunities to join national delegations from over 20 Caribbean countries to display and improve their talents via workshops and other facets. The Carifesta activities commenced on Friday, August 16th and will culminate on Sunday, August 25th. From the Government Information Service, I am Anisia Antoine reporting. This year's Cari Festa has been billed as the biggest celebration of Caribbean culture, heritage and talent. But how did it all start? Dr. Hilary Brown, Program Manager for Culture and Community Development at the CARICOM Secretariat, traced the history of Justine Dunkley Malcolm of CARICOM News Time. We consider Cari Festa to be uh, the flagship cultural festival and activity mm -hmm. of the community. Um, it has been around since 1972, and it was a group of artists mm -hmm. who petitioned then Prime Minister of Guyana to, um, to establish a forum where artists can come together, um, where the region can come together and celebrate who we are, what we represent, have cultural exchanges. And so that very first Cari Festa in Ghana in 1972 was actually three weeks long. Wow. Whereas no, um, Cari Festa is 10 days mm -hmm. over two weekends, mm -hmm. but that was 21 days. Mm -hmm. wow. And everybody, everyone tells me what a tremendous time it was. Mm -hmm. And I think too, perhaps because it was in the context of um, the developing regional integration movement, because CARICOM was established in 73, CARIFTA was established in 1968. So it was that whole period where people were feeling the need for the region to work together, to come together. And that was also reflected in the arts. And of course, we know that even until today, um, the arts is an important part of the of what defines us, what Our brings us together, fabric. and helps us to feel like we're part of one Caribbean family. So Carifesta has that very special place, I think, in bringing the region together. Absolutely. And of course, since we know that Carifesta is such an important cultural event for the region, people want to know what to look forward to at this event. So tell us, what are we to expect? at this festival. I mean, we've been telling people, oh, it's a mega cultural festival. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. What's going to make it such an epic event? Uh, well, the thing about Carifesta, there is something there for everybody. Um, and, and for people who like everything, then they're going to be really confused as to what to choose. <laughs> um, because, and I think what's really good about how this Carifesta is being um, done by Trinidad and Tobago is that they have establish partnerships with different cultural groups and festivals. So it's almost like a series of mini festivals mm -hmm. within the bigger festival. Mm -hmm. So the Trinidad and Tobago Film Festival is organizing the whole film component. And wow. so that's going to be excellently done. Mm -hmm. The Bocas Literary Festival, which is highly acclaimed throughout the region as a literary festival, they're organizing that component wow. with tributes to Walcott and so on. Oh, oh. And then of course, we're gonna have our signal events. Our mm -hmm. signal events are where um, are events that are 
identified as with performances or with artists performing at the highest level. Wow. So there will be a signal event in dance. There's going to be a high-end fashion show at the Hyatt. Um, and then, of course, there's the partnership with UWI and the symposium. So if you're into papers and academics and thinking about the role of culture in society, then there's an incredible program at the UWI. This is NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Hurricanes can be very destructive. Although we can't stop them, we can lessen the effects of hurricanes on our lives and property by preparing. Start by having a family disaster management plan in place long before the hurricane season starts. Discuss your plan with your family and ensure that everyone knows their role. Okay everyone, let's go over our family disaster plan from last year. You should also have an emergency supplies kit with items that do not need refrigeration and will last for some time. Include canned foods, water, clothing, first aid supplies, flashlights, battery powered radios, batteries, sanitation and hygiene supplies, medication, special need items for infants, the elderly and persons with disabilities. Remember to regularly replace items like water, food, medication and batteries. Ensure that your home and vehicle insurance coverage are appropriate and up to date and secure important documents in a watertight container. Ensure that your house and property is in good condition and can weather the storm. Trim branches away from your house and prune all dead or weak trees on your property. The Atlantic hurricane season is from June to November, but preparedness is year-round. Always be prepared. This message brought to you by the Beaufort South District Disaster Preparedness Committee and NEMO and funded by the USAID Office of Foreign Disaster Assistance. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sport. Thanks, Janelle. Welcome to your weekend edition from Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Minister for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, commended the island's young football male and female football teams on their exceptional performances over the last weekend and called on all stakeholders to continue to play their part in the advancement of sports in St. Lucia. I congratulate you. I congratulate your parents for putting their best foot forward, for seeing to it that you did what you, what you have done. I congratulate all the coaches for the work that you are doing on island. The administrators, we are going full thrust. We are putting our foot on the gas and we are pressing. Because like I told you a while ago, we want to achieve a lot, a lot more than you have achieved. A reception was hosted last Tuesday by Prime Minister the Honorable Alan Chastney at his official residence. The Prime Minister announced some incentives for the national under-15 boys and under-14 girls. For the young ladies who came second at the under-14 competition, um, we've organized for all of you um, to be able to get a day pass to go to Coconut Bay uh, for the day. And for the the boys, under 15 boys, um, that we have organized a, a day trip on your own catamaran. Um, the young girls who are going to Honduras on Sunday, I made the same commitment to them, that if in fact they come back as winners, that we will also give them a day trip on, on the catamaran um, when they come back. But I just, it's a small token to say thank you, but to let you know that your work has only just begun and we will be there not behind you, not in front of you, but with you by your side all the way. President of the Federation of International Football Associations, FIFA, Giovanni Infantino, has lauded the work currently being undertaken in St. Lucia to develop the sport of football. Mr. Infantino spoke to the NTN nightly following a brief visit to the island and having visited a number of projects that FIFA is supporting. Uh, we are investing together with the Federation and uh, with the government into women's football, girls' football, boys, youth, men, women, uh, building pitches, building infrastructure, and uh, ultimately uh, doing something great for 
the community, the society in St. Lucia, but also for the top level through the uh, academy and through the results and investment in, uh, in, in the youth sector. So extremely positive. I think that St. Lucia has and can be or can be and has to be uh, an example not only for the region but beyond the region on what is done football. I'm very, very happy today. The FIFA president said he was looking forward to continued work at the FIFA-sponsored football facility at Granivere Denry. That's our segment from Youth Development and Sports this weekend. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. The roadmap to the development of local government reform has been refined following a retreat held by Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. Chevroy Marius reports. The Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment has undertaken the fourth phase of the Local Government Sensitization Training Workshop. The workshop was held at the Bay Gardens Hotel from August 6 to August 8, 2019. Ms. Lenita Joseph is the Deputy Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment. This retreat will promote congruence between parliamentary representatives and their respective constituency councils, clarify roles and responsibilities and encourage the formulation of and implementation of customized strategic constituency development plans which will undoubtedly be more impactful. Prime Minister of St. Lucia, the Honorable Alan Chastney, stated that for local government to obtain transparency, there must be a level of accountability from elected local government councils. We generally believe that there needs to be the reintroduction of some form of elections at a local level. Because you can't say that there's going to be transparency without there being accountability. And so while we may not believe that we've reached a point where the entire council should be elected, we do believe that um, certain members of, the, of, of a council should be elected because we are in fact going to be spending the states and the, the citizens' money. And so therefore they should have a say in that. Local government would then be responsible for the delivery of a complete range of services and infrastructure required by the individual communities, for example, parks and gardens, roads, streets, bridges, libraries and drainage maintenance, mental wellness, elderly care and general services such as garbage collection and property tax registration, enforcing certain laws relating to building planning, health care and the well-being of each individual. We believe that road maintenance, um, maintenance of the sporting facilities, um, that um, elderly care, mental wellness, uh, education and sports ought to be involved in local government. And that the idea of a physical building, if we have to think of one, of this, the Castries Town Council is something that needs to be emulated throughout all of the constituencies. Over the past few years, the functions and responsibilities of local government has been transferred to centralized authorities, and many of the services provided are carried out through linkage and other government agencies. Reporting from the Ministry of Equity, Social Justice, Local Government and Empowerment, I am Chevroy Marius. Stay with NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Novella Creole. Si ou jouen nan bil ki ho, gade si siten ou ka koule. Se pa tout lè ou ka ywe, kote siten la ka koule. Avan ou kouye ou asko, examine siten la pa kou. E kouye ni mi woa ki asou mita. Pa seve dloa pou 3 minit pou yon neditan. Deviwe e kouye ni mi woa ki asou mita. Si ni mi woa chanje siten la ka koule. Kouye an ploma pou oje poblem la vitman. Sa se an komisyon hod ou asko. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle, a Creole. Monsieur Tan, Genel, Monsieur Madame, Department qui n'est pas responsable, ou information en gouvernement, c'est le GIS, à ce moment Télévision Nationale, PIA, NTN, à vous êtes au Nouvelle, à Creole, vous êtes au Primus Hutchinson. Gouvernement, c'est le qui a collaboré avec un groupe de banques mondiales. 
pour développer un système santé dans un projet ou un renforcement. L'objectif là, c'est pour improuver à sa capacité pour yon recevoir, pour yon recevoir un service santé qui est plus available et qui est en plus haut degré à de meilleure façon pour délivrer ces services là plus facilement. Une initiative là, qu'a fait à la direction du ministère de la Santé. En deuxième phase, pour ça là, yon ka improuvé à sou, et bien yon ka improuvé à sou, et vire mette en neuf 33 facilités santé, qui te trouvé choisi principalement pour ça. Yon aussi ka y compte qui quantité en ces équipements ça là, en ces facilités là, et ka si participement en note toujours, on va me plaisir l'autre. Pour effectivement adresser ces changements là, la caille ni un assessment de ménagement social avec le gouvernement qui a fait pour essayer de réduire et courager pièce de casement qui peut faire des temps pour gérer ça la opération. À part de ça, il y a un plan national de ménagement pour déposer les ordres des affaires santé qui ont été augmenter en façon de cet arrangement neuf et consommé pour déposer équipement médical sans essor. En parmi l'autre activité qui a une manière pour ni meilleure sécurité pour le système d'information. Capacité pour opération laboratoire et meilleure façon pour préparer pour adresser vite la nécessité des affaires de santé publique. Les autorités ont déjà établi une façon pour adresser toutes ces nécessités pour ces divers trois qui pourraient à la PNI cause. Ça a fait à bas plan de ménagement social et l'environnement. Autorité pour ménagement a fait son dire cette ci Chaque point de marche pour adresser la situation facilité des ordi qu'a posé pour le public là. Principalement, en sous pays, l'autorité a annoncé la semaine passée un plan pour fermer la facilité des ordi en vieux fort en mois d'octobre l'année ici. Du moment ça là, toutes les ordi en face de ce pays qui ont été transportés pour déglo pendant l'autorité a travaillé sur le placement neuf pour déposer les ordi en façade sous cette ci Autorité a déclaré que des marches nouveaux ça là c'est nécessaire comme facilité aujourd'hui vieux fort j'avini y a un mauvais problème santé pour public là problème pour déposer aujourd'hui c'est un qui a porté une présence qui est très formidable les facilités au choc qui commencent à poser problème après 20 ans les autorités replacent facilité ça là à Cicero mais à l'année 2003 Cicero aussi tenez pour faire Alors, les autorités tenez pour établir une facilité neuf à déglo. À présent, après 23 ans, les résidents Miku pour souffrir, car ils pour marrer un autre plus red. Comme gouvernement, ni Cévelio, très engagé pour décider et trouver un placement neuf pour établir une facilité pour déposer ordi contre ces communes là. J'ai un directeur pour South Shores Services, Osbert James, remarqué que plan c'est pas pour washer facilité à netement mais pour garder un meilleure façon pour soit établir un côté pour déposer ces ordres de sala pour en titan toujours et bien pour établir une facilité neuf selon James n'importe un des décisions ça là c'est pas yon côté les résidents en façade sud pays à qui rester sans service pour déposer ces ordres James ajoute que les autorités j'ai plusieurs placements en l'idée et ni espoir qui y ont décision qu'ils fait plus bonne parce que plus tard facilité aujourd'hui en sous pays j'ai espéré décadifier en ces temps qui passaient y ont qui était puis à battre et l'autre là c'était fait ça c'était fait à l'été comme aujourd'hui qui restait tiré pour un certain temps car l'occasion est différente y ont l'autre trois mille tailleurs de faire situation plus dangereuse toujours comme y ont mal fouti des prix au différent L'environnement, l'école et l'hôpital en stadium là, qui concerne les autorités plus toujours, et, et puis vieux l'eau de l'air qui a sorti de la facilité de ça là. La fumée est très présentable, particulièrement l'école qui peut autorité pour déposer les ordres pour payer, pour annoncer un placement neuf pour jeter les ordres, mais faciliter les ordres en vieux fort, supposé fermer officiellement en mois d'octobre 2019. Tout de suite, je fais le tour par Kaïsa, Gawé, le tour au bordel, chimé l'hôpital. Ça, c'est chimé en sorte de castri pour entrer à l'hôpital Victoria. Selon l'IME, Peterson Francis, ça, c'est une situation qui est sérieuse 
parce que c'est un morceau chimé qui docte avec nos ambulances qui a servi. Et aussi, c'est un morceau chimé qui est là pour n'importe quoi venir pour l'hôpital. Monsieur Lime a déclaré que pour courager la situation, tu as fait ça. Et qu'il est nécessaire pour tout bout, tu fais l'auto gaoué, bordage chimé ça là, plus vite que possible. Personne ne va attendre personne à parler de ça. Si un bail est fait, et puis il passe, il passe en service l'autre chimé. Si mais ça c'est l'absence de chimé l'hôpital là. Si un bail est fait, on va attendre tout le monde qui a cette liste, tout le monde s'est gardé. Ben il y a ça d'où c'est le bail la fête, il y a ça d'où il a fait. Pas avant. Soit chimé si mais l'hôpital là c'est pour pour aller l'hôpital. Et puis nous 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 ça qu'est-ce que tu veux? Mais c'est Peterson Francis t'es allé à à des rendez-vous et puis les journalistes à sous situation conseil de ville Castri pour adresser le développement neuf à cette là à cette ville là. Et premièrement il parlait à son travail à sous la place neuf là qui a marché assez bien. Il dit décision pour les mettre business trouver permission à présent pour jouer musique à ville là à présent et pour faire plus difficile pour les gens de faire mal propre en ville Castri. C'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle, mesdames et messieurs. Je vous remercie autant pour regarder. Je vous remercie une invitation pour que je vous remercie encore. Si vous avez fait la vie, vous avez posé une nouvelle nouvelle. Je vous remercie tout. Un bon fin de semaine. Et à présent, veuillez vous présenter tout. Génial. Merci à Peel Primus. Here's a look at what's happening with us weather-wise. Fair to partly cloudy, hazy and breezy with a few scattered showers. An increase in cloudiness is expected during Saturday with scattered showers and a few thunderstorms which will continue into Sunday. A tropical wave located over the central tropical Atlantic is moving westward near 20 miles per hour or 31 kilometers per hour. This system is expected to bring cloudy conditions with showers and isolated thunderstorms over the eastern Caribbean islands from Saturday into Sunday. Another tropical wave located near the West African coast is moving westward near 17 miles per hour or 28 kilometers per hour. Tropical cyclone formation is not expected over the tropical Atlantic during the next five days. Tides for Castries Harbor High at 4.45 p.m., low at 9.59 p.m. Tides for Viewfort Bay, high at 5.52 p.m., low at 11.26 p.m. Seas, moderate to locally rough with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Saturday at 5.50 a.m. That brings us to the end of NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I am Janelle Norville.